Good morning, one and all. Welcome to Garden America. We do see you, those that are on Facebook Live. Thank you so much for tuning in. We trust you had a good week. We are opening up the weekend together. Thank you for joining us. And those on BizTalk Radio listening to this pre-recorded program, thank you for your support each and every week. I'm Brian Maine, Tiger Palafox, John Bagnasco. We are ready to go with a lot of great information, a good show lined up, obviously a great guest, everything that you want, need, and ask for. We do it for you right here on Garden America. Speaking of a guy who does it for everybody, John Bagnasco. Welcome to the show, John. John arrived this morning bright and early. He's been in the green room for the better part of an hour, and uh, (laughs) he's looking good. Hi, John. Hey, the Pacific Air Show in Huntington Beach. Carla reminded us going on today. I thought I... I could be wrong, but I thought they said they were expecting three million people. What for for that for air an show? Air yeah. show? Wow! We had our Miramar air show last weekend here. How many were here? I have no idea. I just know they fly right over our place. And yeah, the whole, they, the whole place shakes. There's no, there's almost nowhere in San Diego that you can go that avoids the air show. No, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's pretty much flies over the whole city. Do you know how many times I've seen the air show? Never, never. Really? <laughs> Never, n- never even close. Anytime John sets up a question like that, the answer is either never, zero, or, or not every, interested. Or every day. Yeah. <laughs> are you, but, but are you really not interested at all? Because you know you get to go to Miramar on the tarmac and see these planes and drones and helicopters and all of that stuff close The whole up. time I was there, I'd be thinking, you know, if I was home, I could be pulling weeds. <laughs> Really? Yeah. It I would is enjoy so that so yeah, much so Here's more. the thing. If, if if you did go to be that close to those, what, are they F-16s now, whatever they are? Yeah. The the power and, and how loud it is and, and the energy, it just it, it gets into your, your, your soul. It just yeah. shakes the, your whole foundation. And it's like, wow, those things are powerful. Yeah, they're really neat. It's, I, I feel I, the I same like way pruning roses, though. Yeah, <laughs> the power and <laughs> energy. You know why yeah. do why do we not have a bumper sticker on his car that says "I'd rather be pulling weeds"? Yes, yeah, exactly. That's, That's true. What he needs for sure. Not only have I never but, seen the air show, I've never seen uh, the Tom Cruise movie. What Top Gun. It? Top. Never saw Top Gun. I saw oh. the first one. Closest hey, I've come to Top Gun is I have a miniature rose called Top Gun. You don't even live in San Diego, then. No, the closest you've come to <laughs> Top Gun is driving by Camp Pendleton. <laughs> oh yeah. Or Miramar. Or Miramar. Miramar. So I should have said Miramar. Yeah. Well, we but it's not in, Top Gun anymore. We lived no. in Toulouse. Uh, we would always have our windows rattling. Oh, literally right. rattling. And this so is while the bridge was them. out, right? Huh? This is while the bridge was out. <laughs> yeah. And it flooded. No, no, this that would be when the bombs were going off at Camp Pendleton. Yeah. Yeah, I remember those days. What you don't remember, Tiger, I mean, I don't know about you, John, because you grew up in Michigan, but back in the 60s here in San Diego, we had sonic booms all the time. All the time. And then from, every Monday at noon at the from fires. From Miramar or from North Island? From everywhere. It was active during the Cold War back in the 60s. And then at noon at the fire station in Pacific Beach, the, the, bomb, air raid, the air raid air siren air would yeah. go off. Every yeah, Monday there's, a at picture, noon. there's a picture of one of those. Um, I, I, what was it described to me was they used to put those hot air balloons up in <clears> case <throat> of an air raid that it would like. It, they were basically like mines in the air for planes. If they came in, they had these hot air balloons above San Diego. So when planes flew over, they would have to like divert them or whatever. But they had one at the nursery that was that was anchored at the nursery, and it was in the air. Really? Yeah, there's a photo. Well, yeah, because you guys have been there since 1910. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, is that World War One or you've been through both yeah, wars? I've been through. I have not been through either. Both the wars. nursery has. But. Well, you mentioned the Cold War, and I don't think climate change gets enough credit for ending the Cold War. See, there you go. <laughs> exactly. John brought his A game today. Yeah, he did. <laughs> so uh, let's see. October nursery. Yes. I would assume poinsettias are coming soon. No, pumpkins are now. Well, pumpkins are Mums. now. Poinsettia is not till Thanksgiving. Although I'm getting although, ahead of myself. Well, no, a month too early. I got excited. No, but you know there is that market that you remember the poinsettias in poinsettia companies introduce those orange right poinsettias to try to prolong their sales. So there are some poinsettias that will be hitting the market soon in the orange colors. But, um, but it's gourd season right now. My gourd, son, yeah. by the way, named the first orange poinsettia. Oh, really? Yeah. We were up at Eckie's, and he came up with the name Pumpkin Pie. Oh, that's a perfect name for it. Yeah. Yeah. But um, uh, you know but the other thing, grasses. But they don't do those anymore, do they? I don't know. 
You know, there's so many different names they, on different they ones. They tried and, to do the curly one for Valentine's, and yeah. nobody wanted to give a poinsettia for Valentine's. <laughs> yeah, uh, they've they've just completely saturated the market. But now they don't much. do the, they don't have to be uh, black cloth anymore. Correct, yeah. So they're day length <laughs> neutral. Yeah. So you can, you can grow one all year round if you want and just cut it back, it'll bloom. Yeah, they don't have to worry so much about the different bracts. Remember how right. Eki used to have? It was like a different form, and it was like an Eki poinsettia because of the form that they grew it in. Well, it was mostly because of the size. Yeah, they they instead of growing a pinched poinsettia, they grew one flower per stem. So if you had a three bloom poinsettia, there were actually three plants in there. Where to cut down on the expense and grow them cheaper. A lot of discount stores would just grow the pinched poinsettia, so you'd get a bunch of blooms, but only one plant. And it'd be like a, a smaller, a smaller. Oh, they would be smaller just because, yeah, and, there were more blooms on. Yeah, it. exactly. But things have changed. It's all different now. Things have changed. No, and then you know, and then I'm bummed because, as John has mentioned in the past before, the mums, all the mums in Southern California that hit the market now are those very small, little button mums that. Ugh. are just not even great. And then they they all go out of bloom at the same time, so it just looks like the whole plant is dead, even though it's not. And Well, they bloom so early that you always have, like the last three weeks we've had 100-degree temperatures. Yeah. The flowers just burn. Yeah. They look terrible. And, and, you know, but meanwhile, we've lost those beautiful, large flowering mums. Not if you read the newsletter yeah. a couple weeks ago. There yeah. was a link to kingsmums.com. And uh, I think you can start ordering in November, but you have a short window where you can actually order any of those big mums. Uh, you just get little cuttings. They ship them in the spring. But the, the nice thing, I think, for California about those mums is they bloom the end of October, beginning of November. Which is the perfect time for mums. Right, because the weather's cooled yeah. off, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can Speaking have of the, that, it is cooling off, isn't it? I, I well, think, I think we're there. No, right? it, Today it is. Today it is. It's October. We're going to have 85 I had, degree I had 90 wind, degree temperatures last days. week. Yeah. No, no, I'm saying right now. We that, Last week was hot. Yeah. I'm saying as of right now, I think we're going into a cooler part of the three week. Days. I was looking, but another another week from or towards the end of uh, this coming week, it's back in the 90s. I can't take it. <laughs> I won't. All right. That is that is the the funny thing, and I see if we get you I, a sign and join the protesters <laughs> next door. We knew uh, if they were protesting. I um, it's one of those things in San Diego, you know, that we're we're never really satisfied. And what happens is in the winter time, which is only about six weeks, we're like, oh, we can't wait for it to get warm again. And then it gets warm. It's inevitable. It gets warm and sunny, and there won't be rain for a long period of time. Don't you agree, though, that it's e if you're cold, it's easier to get warm than it is if you're really hot to cool off? You can put a jacket on if it's cold. You can do the necessary things to put you comfortable in that particular situation. If you're hot, you either have to go inside, you have to turn air conditioning on. It just seems Jump like there's, a swimming more, pool. there's more effort. Swimming pool. All right, yeah. hey, we got to talk about today's guest because you brought some gloves with you, Tiger, which I believe is uh, going to be associated with our guest today. They make me nervous, but I'm sure there's a good explanation for those gloves. Yeah, they're wonderful gloves for gardening. And uh, Charlie DuPont with Char Guy Enterprises um, was one of the creators of these gloves. And we're going to talk about how they uh, benefit gardeners in more than one way. In more than one way. Yes. You said his last name is DuPont? Yes. Are we going to be talking about painting? Yeah, or yeah, or what? <laughs> yeah, the Dupont is no, no they did chemicals, a lot more right? than that. Yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. We were, I'm sorry, we were at the Rothschilds over in France, right? <laughs> That's another huge family, chocolate and everything right. else. But Dupont is another old money family. They're the it, leaders John? of the Illuminati, aren't they? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> they're, they're, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, we have to kill another minute before the Got segment. Quote of the week. Quote of the week. So that means the quote of the week. It's exactly right, John. All right. Quote, Brian, is, it's true that I have a wide range of interests. I like to write and paint and make music and go walking on my own and garden. In fact, gardening is probably what I enjoy doing more than anything else. Now, before you say who it is, that quote could also be attributed to somebody else, although it wasn't. 
George Harrison. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it wasn't George Harrison. No, but that he says, that I'm a gardener at heart. I just happen to be in a band. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're going to be in a band, it may as well be the Beatles. Right. <laughs> and who was that quote again, John? Vigo Mortensen. Oh, boy, I can't remember the that last the actor? time. I, yeah. Yeah. That guy? Yeah, I like that. It guy. Was in uh, he played the the king in Lord of the Rings. That's right. He That's did. how you yeah. know him. Okay, fans, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is break time for those on Biz Talk Radio, and of course those of us on Facebook Live. We're going to get a hold of our guest and going to be talking about gloves today, how they can help you in the garden, your friends, and your family. Tiger Palafox, John Bagnasco, I'm Brian Maine. Welcome to the show. We're going to take a break. We're going to get Greg on the uh, telephone, and those on Biz Talk Radio. We're going to return after these messages. Stay with us. All right, we are back from the break. Uh, welcome once again to Garden America. Those on Biz Talk Radio, we do appreciate you tuning in each and every week. We thank our sponsors. We thank the team at uh, Biz Talk Radio, Stephanie and her team, for doing a great job keeping Garden America on across the country, this great nation on the network. Okay, we are back. We're going to be talking about gloves today here on Garden America. I'm going to turn things over to Tiger, and we're going to bring on uh, Charlie. Let's talk about those unusual long gloves you have there, Tiger. <laughs> unusual long gloves. <laughs> But with a purpose, and this morning we have Charlie DuPont from Char Guy Enterprises, um, one of the creators of these wonderful gloves that I have here today. Charlie, good morning. How are you doing? Hey, guys. Hey, Tiger. Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate the time. Yeah, well, we appreciate you taking the time and joining us because, you know, one of the things that gardeners um, always are looking for is a good pair of gloves. I mean, I think in every arsenal you've got your good pruners, um, and then you also have some good gloves because, you know, I'm a, I, I was a old school brought up uh, nurseryman, Charlie. And, you know, my dad yep. and the people that uh, worked for my dad were like, oh, you don't wear gloves. You know, your, your, your hands get tough. Come on, you can take it. Yeah, your hands get tough. You get some blisters. <laughs> yeah. You get some calluses. And um, I, I've always been a glove wearer. I have a, I have a <laughs> pair of gloves. I, I, I think, I, and I, I, I don't mean to sound like um, – I'm not trying to make fun of anything, but you know, some people like need glasses and they just have those reading glasses stashed everywhere. I have gloves. gloves I have gloves. Gloves I have, everywhere. I have gloves in my car. I have gloves in my toolkit. I have gloves in my office because I just always have them. So that way I, I can use them whenever. And these gloves that you have created, Charlie, are, are very unique and different. But before we get into the gloves, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and how this came about. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, basically, uh, I designed these gloves with my father, and um, we are based in New England, actually uh, uh, right outside New Haven, Connecticut. Um, so unfortunately, we only get uh, a few months out of the year where we can actually, uh, you know, garden and get our hands dirty and, um, you know, actually enjoy it. Um, and we have about a 25-square-foot garden right outside of our house. So, you know, any chance we get, we're out there. Um, we, we really have been gardening forever, truthfully, um, from anything from banana peppers and tomatoes, cucumbers, 
uh, kale, broccoli, uh, you know, you name it, we've tried it. Uh, some more successful than others. Um, and uh, it's truthfully, it's, it's great for us because it's, it's a little bit of bonding uh, time as well. Um, it, it, there's really nothing like, a, you know, a, a warm Saturday or Sunday where you're outside and, um, you know, you're, 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 you're working on something that's yours. Um, and just so basically, I, just to jump in quickly about how um, the idea came about, uh, was like you said, we <laughs> we've always always been glove people. I, I do believe that you know getting your hands dirty is a good thing, but there's no reason that you know we you know we just want to protect our hands essentially. And um, we found over the years, I'm sure like many, uh, that you know after a full day of gardening, we you know come inside and our arms, not only our hands but our arms, our wrists, all the way up to you know basically our shoulders uh, would come out with you know scratches or rashes or cuts, just little things, nothing serious, but still enough to be agitating. Um, and so uh, just in our basement, we started tinkering with some ideas of how to prevent that, how to make our, you know, day in the garden just a little bit easier. Um, and I'm sure most people out there, you know, the spandex Under Armour, mm -hmm. uh, uh, long sleeve Under Armour. We, uh, basically cut off the arm and sewed uh, the arm of the uh, Under Armour to just a regular glove, um, a regular um, garden glove. And, and we were using that, um, and it was, you know, quirky, but it worked. Um, to be honest with you, we're not professional uh, seamstresses, so <laughs> we, uh, it would sometimes tear, and, you know, we were always remaking them. And we kind of looked at each other one day and said, you know, we should actually maybe put some time and, and money into into making a more sustainable glove. Um, and, you know, we thought polyester would be best. And so we started working with a few manufacturers, and, um, and, and next thing you know it, we have this long sleeve garden glove that really does kind of form fit your full arm. Um, it, it, it fits good on the hand, fits good on the wrist, fits good on the arm, uh, easy to take on, easy to take off, and, and you know, after experimenting with it, we, we found that a full day of gardening uh, didn't lead to, you know, cuts and rashes like they used to. And, and you know, we thought others could really benefit from this as well. Um, so truthfully, they, it started from just getting annoyed by, you know, rashes and cuts and everything. And, and we, we, we needed a solution. And, you know, one of the things I know you um, mentioned as well uh, poison, poison ivy, poison oak, you know, whenever you're working in the landscape um, and you have an area where you you do have poison ivy kind of or poison oak kind of growing, you know, sometimes yep. you don't notice what you're picking up. And sometimes um, you might accidentally, you know, brush up against it. And this offers you that little bit more protection, right? Exactly. And, and you hit the nail on the head is, you know, after you're you know, been in the yard for a few hours, you kind of stop paying attention to what could be, you know, any kind of poisonous um, plant, any kind of poisonous vine. And so when you're kind of just working, you're focusing on one thing, um, you know, like you said, it's easy to, to brush up against something. And then all of a sudden, you know, your elbow touches your knee and then, you know, all of a sudden it's spreading all over your body. So yeah. this kind of does, that's, this is a workaround, basically. It lets you kind of, Stop thinking about, oh, I got to worry about poison ivy. I got to worry about poison oak. Uh, I got the gloves on. I can kind of just work and focus on what I'm doing. Um, and, you know, it, it's it's just more of peace of mind uh, in the garden, I'd say. Yeah. And and then, I mean, you know, John, who uh, works with roses a lot, is very familiar with rose gloves. You know, they're leather. They come up, you know, uh, to, to your elbow usually. Um, yep. But those could be kind of more thick and hot those are meant to protect you from the thorns of the glove exactly so sometimes those you don't want to be wearing all day while working in the yard because then now they're uh, just, just they're just maybe a little bit too much protection yeah and it's too hard to maneuver yeah if you're using exactly. those if you're pruning exactly yeah, yeah. so this gives you it's that flexibility you know if you're not if you're not worried about a puncture a puncture wound yeah <laughs> you know exactly. it, it gives you that exactly. flexibility Exactly. And I actually, I have a few pairs of, um, you know, pruning and, and thorn proof gloves myself, my, both my father and I do. And you're right. They do definitely serve their purpose, but 
ours, there's just ours are just so much more breathable and they're just lighter and more flexible. You know, you can, you can move around in them easier and it's, everything's a little bit more seamless and, you know, you don't have to be taking them off every, you know, 20, 30 minutes because your hands are, you know, your hands are on fire. Your hands are hot. It's, these are really designed to kind of be a mix between, you know, they are very protective. They're very tough, but at the same time, they're, they're lightweight. They're breathable. Um, Yeah. Hey Charlie, you know, you're not going to be drenched after using them for a few yeah, hours. Definitely. Hey, we we have to pause for a uh, commercial break right now, but when we get back, we'll continue talking with Charlie Dupont and about these wonderful gloves and what people need to think about when buying gloves. So something needs to consider. You are right, Tiger. Pause for the cause as we uh, head to uh, Biz Talk Radio quickly with our sponsors. Those on Facebook Live, questions, comments. Go ahead and start posting. Any questions for Charlie? Great gloves, as, as we mentioned, for Poison Ivy, Poison Oak, and just all around if you're going to be out in the garden for a long time. This is Garden America. We're going to take a break. Happy weekend to you. Back after these messages on Biz Talk Radio. All right, we are back from the break. Thank you for tuning in. Those on uh, BizTalk Radio, those on Facebook Live, thank you for, uh, for supporting uh, Garden America, I should say. As we continue, we're talking about gloves today, but not just any garden glove. These are, are quite different. Perhaps you haven't seen them until maybe this morning. I think, uh, Tiger, you put a link up on the Facebook page, right? People yeah, thanks for, thanks for reminding right. me. That and there's a picture up there as well. Of the gloves themselves, yes. right? And thanks for reminding me because, yeah, um, right now you can find the gloves on Amazon. Um, a real easy way to search for them on Amazon, if you're just listening over the radio, is hit uh, Char Guy, C H A R Guy, G U Y, and then gloves, and they're one of the first products that pop up. Um, because if you type in gloves, and I was just going to mention this, and you get a lot. John, <laughs> yeah. John, John was a buyer for uh, large garden centers uh, for a while there, and I was going to ask you, John, gloves. There's more gloves than pruners, than watering cans. Oh, yeah. Than, if you th- go to a home improvement uh, store now, right, yeah. and you go to the glove section, yeah, there's, there's dozens and dozens to choose from. And you know what surprised me when I went to look at these gloves online is uh, my guess, as you know, my experience yeah. as a buyer, my guess was that the retail would be around fifty dollars, mm-hmm. you know, like forty nine ninety five. Yeah, yeah. Which I thought would be a good price, mm-hmm. and and that's not the price. No, I think what are they like twenty bucks or something? Yeah, like twenty one dollars or something like yeah. that. Yeah. So really good value. And and Charlie, I'm sure you did your research when creating these gloves. Um, so you know more than us that there's a lot of gloves out there for gardening. What are some Absolutely. things that people need to consider when they are looking for some gloves? What are some things that, you know, you guys thought of when creating these gloves? Yeah, of course. So uh, one one big thing for us uh, off, off the very beginning of uh, this was we wanted the palms to be incredibly durable and incredibly, I'm not going to say sticky, but, you know, you can use them really in any condition. Um, you could pick up any kind of material, any kind of surface, wet or dry, so that's kind of where it started. We knew we wanted nitro-coated palms to start. Um, we just thought, really, again, no matter where you are, um, inside, outside, nitro-coated was the way to go. It's just, mm-hmm. it's just a, it's a better material. It's, it's more reliable. It's sturdier. And then, and, really, and real it quick, to, real quick to just describe right, that there, because there are so many Charlie clubs out there, and really, <laughs> I mean, it's probably obvious, but the huge differentiator for us was. Can we not only make a sleeve to protect the whole arm, but how are you going to get that sleeve to, um, you know, actually stand true to your arm and, 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 and not just fall all the way down to your cuff where now all of a sudden you're wearing some, you know, loose and, um, you know, really not protective sleeve. So that was big for us um, in, you know, producing it uh, over the, you know, six or seven months that, um, you know, we were designing uh that was a big thing. We, we, we were getting, um, we were manufacturing leaves that really were not sitting fit on your arm all the way up to the shoulder. Um, so that was a huge, huge differentiator for us, right, was we need this sleeve to be not, you know, in, 
incredibly tight, not as tight as you would say maybe an Under Armour, because you do still want to be able to move around. You don't want to feel like you're losing circulation or anything like that. But we needed it to, 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 to really sit tight on the arm. Um, and, you know, I, I, like you said, there, there are hundreds and hundreds of, you know, gloves out there. But I really do think that this is the big differentiator where it, it's, it's, it's true to fit. You're, mm-hmm. you're throwing it on and you don't have to worry about it sliding off your arm. Um, there's an elastic band very at the very, very end of the sleeve um, that, you know, it doesn't pinch it, it's not tight and super tight, but it's tight enough to, to um, you know, hold up and, and make sure the sleeve actually, uh, you know, stays where it's supposed to be over that shoulder, um, even up to your bicep. So I would say those two are the, were the biggest things, you know, early on and still today that, um, that we really think, um, you know, differentiate uh, th- these gloves. Yeah, and I mean, something else I would add to it is, um, you know, we talked about uh, Poison Oak, wash washability. I mean, you know, yep. these gloves can easily, I'm, I'm assuming, be thrown into a washing machine and Absolutely. come out on the other side just fine, where sometimes those uh, leather gloves or some of the thicker work gloves, you throw them into the wash, they kind of get deformed, they don't come out the same. Um, so I think that Absolutely. these ones would come out just... Uh, uh, even better than when you put them in. You know, I tried uh, tried those on just yeah. now uh, because looking at them, the palm doesn't look flexible to mm-hmm. me. It looks like it would be stiff because it is nitrile, right? Yeah. And uh, and I was surprised at how flexible it is. It, it has as much flexibility as any glove you would want. Yeah, and um, I was mention I was going to mention Charlie. You were talking about the nitrile coating, and for people that are listening on the radio. The, the nitrile coating is a, a rubber coating of the cloth part of the glove, which helps with, um, you know, I, I mean, I think I think nitrile gloves came out mostly for potting plants. You know, when, when people were potting plants, they wanted something flexible, something breathable when they're working with their right. containers, um, a little bit waterproof to some extent. Also for chemicals, and, for chemical use. Yeah, right? for spraying, right. you know, and things right. like that. And so... Um, but it allows that flexibility, unlike a, a stiffer glove that doesn't get. And it also, I don't know, I kind of feel like it allows you to feel more what you're doing. Yeah. Where the thicker gloves didn't right. allow you to feel as much when you're working in the garden. Exactly. So it, it gives that flexibility. Um, we do have a question from oh, a listener. Perfect. Uh, Carla wants to know about the fingertip. She says that her fingers always poke through the tips of her gloves. Mm. And so she usually tries to buy gloves with uh, reinforced tips. Mm -hmm. And she wonders how these would hold up. Yeah, so it's actually the the nitrile, and, and if, um, if if you're looking at the picture, I know you guys have it there in front of you, the, the, the nitrile coating actually does go all the way up over the fingertips. Um, so I, I don't think you would have any real issue about poking through those fingers. They're, like you said, they're, the, the nitrile is just so great because it's, it is a little bit flexible, but it really is durable. You're not going to be able to, you know, push or, or, or force your fingers through there for, for really any reason. And um, so, Charlie, uh, I posted the link to Amazon. Um, I'm assuming you guys are shipping gloves now. I saw there was even another color that you can get them in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, uh, the so one right that we have here are gray. Uh, in gray and green. Um, we are actively um, looking to to expand that into other colors as well. Um, Personally, my father wants to go uh, some kind of lavender or purple. We're still yeah. trying to – we're debating <laughs> over what would be best next. Um, <laughs> but, yes, uh, gray and green right now. Originally started at gray because we wanted to keep it a little neutral, um, you know, uh, and, 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 you know, kind of go right down the middle. But uh, green is green to me is a little more fun, you know. It's, yeah. And even with the green, say you're out in the fall, uh, at least up in New England, um, you know, leaves start <laughs> falling right around now. Um, and so when you're out in the yard, I mean, it's easy to, you drop something, it's easy to lose it under the leaves or, <laughs> Good um, point. you know, even under any, any weather, snow, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, and the green, you know, you can drop them on in your yard, lose them for a week, who knows? And then, uh, all of a sudden you're walking around the green sticks right out to you. So, um, that was kind of a, a big reason we chose that, uh, it's not a neon green, but it is a, it is a bright, bright green so that. 
you know, if it is, if you do happen to lose one, you, you drop one, you, you can easily look around and find it. It sticks right out to you. Hey, Charlie, how about camouflage? Then nobody can see what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, that's a great idea. That's a, then you a great play. idea. I'll bring it up with my father. I'm sure he'd love yeah. that. And, and then everybody will lose their gloves, so they'll just have to keep buying new ones. <laughs> they just got to keep buying more. Yeah. <laughs> Brian, what do you want to do with your hands that you don't want people to see that you're there? <laughs> that, that's exactly what I was that's, thinking about. Yeah, I know the way you think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, well, yeah. Keep us updated as the colors come along. I think yeah. lavender would be a good other color. You know, I think I. Yeah, I, don't know, I, I kind of agree with you. Yeah. That's my wife's um, favorite color. Yeah, and you know, yellow I think is just too bold. You know, then there's the orange and then the red, and yeah. I think lavenders. I do great. like the camouflage ideas. So. Yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah. And, and yellow kind of reminds me of gloves that you would work in the kitchen with. Yeah, you know, so doing <laughs> those yeah. dishwashing yeah. gloves. Dishwashing gloves, but yeah, I think Charlie camouflage. Look into that. <laughs> I, 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 I'll tell you, I hadn't thought of it, but I, that's now at the top of my list. <laughs> yeah, you know, we're not that far from Christmas, right? And Carla says she's putting them on her Christmas list, I, but for twenty dollars, you know, I would order these now because. In it's Christmas, all, you get another pair? No, no. It's just that by the time that Christmas comes around, you've forgotten about it or, yeah. you know, it's last-minute right. things. These take up so little space that you can order them, you can hide them away, and all the gardeners on your list for $20 can have a nice gift. Hey, we're going to have to take a break, Charlie. Stay uh, stay right there. Stay with us. Those on uh, Facebook uh, Live, questions, comments, as they continue to come in, talking about these great gloves. This is Garden America. Going to take a break for our friends on BizTalk Radio. Do stay with us. I'm Brian Maine, John Begnasker, Tiger Palafox. Back after these message, messages, I should say. Should we take two on that? Back after these messages. That was the second take. Our friends on BizTalk Radio. Stay with us. All right, we are back after that uh, short break on Facebook Live, a bit longer on BizTalk Radio. Thank you for your support. And uh, we're with Charlie. We're with uh, his gloves, uh, many other gloves for that matter, as it, in terms of uh, the different colors that they uh, provide or will provide. So let's wrap things up, Tiger. Yeah, so Charlie, I want to thank you very much for joining us this weekend. Great discussion on the, these wonderful gloves you created. Uh, again, Amazon.com. Best way to find them is Char Guy, C H A R Guy. Uh, enterprises or char guy gloves and they'll pop right up um charlie thank you very much such a neat story yeah and um you know please keep us in the loop as far as how things come along okay yeah guys i, I really again i i can't thank you enough for the time i, I really really appreciate it um just real quick i just want to mm -hmm. throw in i forgot to mention they also could be used even for some home renovation stuff i don't know if oh. anyone has <clears throat> excuse me ever um installed any kind of fiberglass installation um, but it's incredibly itchy. It's incredibly irritating when it gets on your skin. Um, you know, for people out there that maybe aren't gardeners and, and do do a little home improvement work, and, you know, fiberglass insulation is just an example of another way it can protect you. Um, but, again, guys, I just wanted to thank you so much uh, for your time. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, Charlie. Take care. Have a good rest of the weekend. Thanks, guys. Have a great weekend. All right. Take care. And as they say in radio, there he goes. You know, Lenore, Lenore asked, and it's, it's too late because we just hung up, but she wanted to know if they had different sizes. Or is this one size fits all, or how it, does it, it work? It says one size fits all. Does it feel like you put them on? Does it feel like? Uh, yeah, I think. It fits I think, me. Yeah, I think it My would fit. My hands are small, though. Yeah, I think it would fit most people. Um, you know, I, you know, obviously, I think the extremes, you know, an extra large hand or an extra small hand, you know, is going to be difficult. But in general, I think it fits well because of the way it's situated with that wrist that um, yeah, yeah. It, it, it positions the, the hand part really well, I think, on anybody's um, arm. You know, so. I'm really bad. I'm one of those that I don't put gloves on right away. Really? I have to wait till I get bit, pricked or scratched. And then I go, oh, yeah, I better get my gloves. You're really? Like the All Will, the time. You're like the Will Myers of gardening. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that little inside Padres joke for those in San Diego. Ugh. Yeah, I have to be reminded, oh, better put the gloves on. Yeah. You know? No, I put them on right away. I... Well, yeah, you have, like you said, you have gloves everywhere. Yeah. You have gloves in your truck. Exactly. You have gloves in your pocket. Yeah. I No, I think that these are a great gloves. You know, and 
you know, Charlie mentioned, you know, fiberglass. I think there's probably a ton of other industries out there that can probably use a glove like this. But, um, you know, here in Southern California, a lot of times we're gardening in short sleeve shirts. Right. We're not, we're not, All we're not. summer. Yeah. Yeah. We're not East Coast people that are long sleeve shirts or anything like that because we don't, it, it's hot. And, and so even sometimes when you're just picking up piles of brush and debris, like he's saying, it scrapes your arms that you don't want to put on that long sleeve shirt, but this is a great thing that you can kind of put on and take off whenever you're working. So it's, it's nice. I like them. Now you need, uh, for the way you work all yeah. summer, you need uh, <laughs> leg. leg, leg, yeah, exactly. Leg armor, oh, yeah, right? yeah, the protection of my my uh, legs. Next, because... it's going to be a whole hazmat suit. Yeah, it's, it's just too hot. <laughs> too hot, right? Oh man, I can't imagine the people. You know, I mean, you know, thoughts and prayers go out to people in Florida, but the people in Florida that work in heat and humidity, I, I mean. That's so tough. Do you, do you ever really Tony get wants used you to, to put it? both of them on so she can see how they look? <laughs> All right, both of them on. Yeah, yeah, not just one, because you can't tell. <laughs> Obviously, she's just tuning in because you had put one on earlier, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, but no, they fit nicely. They're good. I wonder if you can get those at any retail stores. Yeah, uh, right now he's saying just on Amazon. Oh, so, really? Yeah. Boom. Now, Good do they stuff. feel like they would? That wouldn't be too hot, would they? How, how do they, no, how's that not feel? at all. No, I don't. They think, breathe. No, they're they breathable, breathe, right? They're very breathable. Um, and again, you know, I mean, when when you are done working, you can easily just take them off, and then it's cool. Where when you're wearing a long sleeve right. shirt all the time, you're just always hot. So, no, good stuff. Like like we're saying, good Christmas gift, but at the same time. Twenty bucks, buy them now. Twenty bucks. I mean, Amazon. I'm sure they'll probably ship you. Was, I'm sure they'll for probably some ship reason, you I'm like thinking like twenty one forty five or some weird number. Twenty nine ninety five would be twenty like... dollars and seventy nine cents. Oh, Prime one day shipping. Wow. So you get them right away. Free returns. I can have it. I can have some more delivered tomorrow. Right now. See, I do the same thing that uh, Carla does. I. Uh, the, the fingers wear out, yeah. the tips of the fingers, they get holes in them, and I still try to use them, but not, <laughs> don't use that hand as much. <laughs> and, uh, and when you go but, to wash them, they're never the same. No, so something nope. like this. Uh, yeah. But, but I mean, the other nitrile gloves, the, 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 the short-sleeved yeah. nitrile gloves, you can buy a bag of those for 20 bucks. Right, and oh, the kind just... that doctors use. No, they they like are like the really inexpensive like ones. But like you say, the fingers were out real quick and stuff, so you yeah. end up just tossing them. But yeah, these ones are. I think they'll last a lot longer. Yeah, for twenty bucks, my arms are always cut up when I'm done. You know, working oh, out in the. I can't. Roses. I can't believe you. I mean, I understand why you don't wear those rose gloves, but you work yeah. in so much that yeah, you're you're not just scarred up. People people think that you're. You're trying to do something to your arms there. Yeah, really, so John's feel, a feel the pain. Yeah. Feel the John's pain. A cutter. Yes. Yeah, exactly. We need to talk to you about the needle tracks on your arms. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Whenever John goes to the doctor, they they bring in the um, counselor. <laughs> but you know, there's nothing worse than like working around roses, not wearing gloves, like I tend not to do, and then all of a sudden Ooh, you a get that poke. prick. Whoa! It's oh. like ah, it's just like. Like electricity or, through your body. Or right in the fingertip. Yep. Where it's like right under the nail. Ooh, that's the worst. And then you go, okay, get the gloves. Yeah. Yeah. I have um I have someone that I'm sending cuttings of roses to on Monday. Uh-huh. And they asked for sixty different varieties oh my that I have. What? So that means I need sixty plastic bags. I've got to go out there with pruning shears and cut sixty different roses. Um how many, so it's a how lot many, of work. How many cuttings of each rose do you do? I usually do uh, around three. So just to make sure one of the others. Yeah, yeah, sometimes more. It depends on, you know, how that rose bush looks and how the cutting. Some of the roses she's asked me for, um, I, I they're too small to take a cutting. Oh, yeah. So. Well, it is break time. Those on Biz Talk Radio, this is the last segment of the first hour. Hour two starts at uh, six minutes after. News coming up top of the hour. And again, hopefully your market does carry uh, both hours or at least one hour. 
Those on Facebook Live, it's going to be a much quicker break, so do stay with us. Happy weekend. Hope everything is going well in your neck of the woods. As we take this uh, break for our friends on BizTalk Radio, Brian Maine, John Bagnasco, Tiger Palafox, back after the news and these further messages on BizTalk Radio. We are back, and if you are tuned in on BizTalk Radio, this is the very beginning of our number two, those on Facebook Live. It is just one big, happy, fun show here on Garden America. I talked about gloves the first hour with Charlie, gloves that are uh, a little bit different, a little, little bit unique, things that uh, we like to showcase here on Garden America, so hopefully you got a lot out of that. We had a few questions, which is always nice. That means people are paying attention. They're tuned in, John. You know, something else fun and exciting coming up, is the Rose Auction on October 30th. Rose and, Auction. And 31st. Rose Show. Birthday party. Yeah. Uh, artists Jeez. showing. Are we doing it at Chuck E. Cheese? <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing that could make it more fun, yeah, right? right? We are. Here's the things that are going on. It's October 29th and 30th. So Saturday and Sunday, that weekend. Um, Brian and Tiger are both going to be there. Mm -hmm. So that'll be fun. Oh, yeah. boy. Right? That, that'll make another... Five people want to show up. <laughs> <laughs> but Including um, us. Yeah, right? The, I wrote an article for the newsletter this week. If you get the newsletter, you can read all about it. But if you want details, if you go to ccrsauction.com, you can find all the details. But first of all, it's going to be Marian, actress Marion Ross's birthday that week. She's going to be 94 years old. So we're going to have a birthday cake for her. Uh, Burling Leong is going to present a new rose that she's named after Marion Ross, and that'll be in the auction. And right now we're waiting to see, but I'm hoping that the person that gets that rose can also get a publicity photo that Marion has autographed. Mm -hmm. So that would be nice. Then there's going to be an exhibition by San Diego, uh, well-known San Diego artist Nancy Plank, Ooh. And uh, if you if you Google her, you can see s some of her paintings, and she'll have those uh, for sale at the auction. I think she'll have like about 20, 30 feet of paintings to look and at. And for those that do not live in San Diego that won't be here, how can they participate? Well, you can – everything is uh, online right now, and on Monday you can start bidding. And uh, all the directions for bidding will be online. There's 120 roses in total. Um, I was talking to Tiger. Before. Wait, we're going to be bidding 120? Not the live. Those Not are the, the live. Yeah, song. I was going to say, the usually, total it's about, auction. usually it's about 40, 45. It's actually going to be 25 this time. Oh, really? Yes, because I you start whining towards the end. I do. I get, I get a little cranky. Yeah. yeah. And I look around. Is Tiger here? Who? Yeah. Somebody else? Yeah, up? Yeah. 25 is perfect because you know what? You'll get a lot more energy out of me. Yeah, that's go. what I thought. Yeah, a that's lot more. We're gonna put. We're gonna sell some roses this year. <laughs> hey, speaking of the newsletter, which you did, uh, go to our website, GardenAmerica.com, to sign up for the newsletter. You should visit our website at least once a week. Just peruse it. GardenAmerica.com. I know Tiger hangs out there yep. all the time. Yeah, he Just does. He's it. always on our Just website. It there. Yeah, hang out. GardenAmerica.com. Got that live uh, webcam. Uh, yeah. <laughs> of whatever Tiger's doing, he's got a GoPro <laughs> as he walks around Just and following me around. Yeah, as he walks around. Absolutely. Yeah. So GardenAmerica.com and uh, CC uh, the website for the California Coastal CCRSAuction.com. There you go. Also, Brian, if you're from out of town. Uh, right across the street from the auction is the, the Marriott Hotel. And, you know, come down and make a weekend of it. You could spend the night there and uh, see spot. the row show. And also we've got speakers, uh, noted Rosarians as speakers. Uh, noted. On Saturday. As opposed to just a speaker. These are noted speakers. Yes. Noted Rosarians. definitely notes about them. Does that include <laughs> you? Are you going to be talking? No. Really? No. I'm wow. not going to. John gets the, the weekend But off. I will be helping you during the live auction. Of course, you have to. Yeah. And then you have your little presentation before you describe the rose, its origins, who developed it, and then we auction it off. Right. Really quickly. Um, anyway, did I mention? I, I started to, and now I don't know if I did, but uh, I was talking to Tiger, and uh, there's a rose that's a cross between Joseph's coat 
and Kifskate. Right. And Tiger and I both were lucky enough to see the Kifskate rose when we were in England. I assume this, it's very colorful. No, it it has uh, clusters of blooms. The new rose each one, or each one. Kifskate. No, the jo- Joseph. The, Joseph's coat. Yeah, is, that's yeah, very colorful. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. I'm talking about Kifskate because each uh, bloom cluster was the size of a basketball, would yep. you say? Wow. Really? And yeah. and on this one plant, easily 500 of those. Mm-hmm. I, I would yeah. say the plant must have covered half an acre. Yeah. I, I don't know. If it, yeah. It, I mean, it went into trees. It was unbelievable. It's unstoppable. Yeah. But yeah, this one much more colorful because the Kip's Kate's just a white. Right. Um the Joseph's coat cross that uh, John it, sent me a showed me a picture of is kind of a uh, orange, gold, yellow, blush, lots of colors in there. I am And I think the cross tamed down the Kip's Kate. Yeah. Kip's Kate yeah. part of it which is just uh, just crazy. Yeah. But Joseph's <laughs> coat very colorful. Very yeah, it's a colorful. good climber in on its own, right? Yeah, Joseph yeah. Coe? I mean, that's normally right. Joseph Co is just a climbing, you know, rose. Yeah, yeah. so it's cool. So but, it's going to be a good time, and that's. I think. Do we have five Sundays in this month? No, I think that was last month. I thought I counted five again this month. I is didn't there? turn my calendars, did I? Jeez. Well, you've got September, you so you can tell how many Sundays were in September. It looks like oh, four. four from here. Yeah. So maybe I think there might be five in October. I'm thinking maybe. October's got 31 days. Sure does. <laughs> <laughs> October has an O in it. <laughs> That's right. Um, but um, for for people that haven't followed the show before, too, this rose auction we're talking about, um, the CCRS is the California Coastal Rose Society, and the overall goal for the Rose Society is to preserve Endangered um, and, species, yeah, endangered species of roses, varieties of roses, um, that you know across the across the world. And sometimes when you're uh, bidding on these roses, sometimes this is you know only one in the United States, uh, maybe only a handful of them that exist. And um, you could be doing your part and saying, "Oh, I got one. I have one in my yard." Um, now, now, how do we know, John? Neat. Tiger brings up a good point. If somebody bids on a rare rose or one we're trying to save, what do we know about this person? Maybe, I, I <laughs> mean, are they the right them. person? Yeah, I mean, they, they should check. apply. I mean, they are they apply. the right person to be saving this rose or <laughs> propagating this rose? I, I think if we did that, John wouldn't even get a rose. If, if, if we had to work off of the track record on how many roses they killed, mm-hmm. I wonder, would, would we allow John to get a rose? <laughs> well, John's working with numbers. So he had, he's got so many successes. Yeah, he's got so what fifteen hundred to two thousand roses. Yeah, even if he lost a hundred, that's not bad. Unless it happens to be the last one in the world. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Which is back to my point about the people that bid on these roses and actually <laughs> right. win the rose at the auction. That should be a part of your auction technique. Is when I, they bid, you have to ask them questions. Yeah, like I, there's if, nothing wrong with uh, just a, a brief background. So is this going to be, is this gonna be a own? potted rose, or is yeah. it going to plant it in your Are garden? Are you using gloves? Yeah. <laughs> Are you, you know what? What is your favorite fertilizer? Mm-hmm. You, you ask them these questions, and then if they answer it wrong, you say no, you cannot bid it. Do you know what a hybrid tea rose is? <laughs> All these little little questions, and then begin yeah. begin the be- begin. You know the most begin, important thing. Begin the begin. Begin the bidding. Begin the beginning, <laughs> or begin the middle. Begin the begin. Who was that, John? Uh, Big band guy, right? Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, it's back during Mario Lanza's yeah. time. So I was right. going begin the begin, begin the bidding. Tiger's never heard that. Begin the no. begin. No. He has no idea what you're talking about. No, he doesn't. Carla said she'd be banned for life. Uh, <laughs> Carla. <laughs> and then Christy says yes. There are five Sundays in October. Look at that. Someone has a count. And Lila wants to know know the name of the rose we were talking about. That's the cross with Kif Kifskate, and the rose is uh, Joseph's Kifskate. <laughs> no, the rose is <laughs> Suzanne. S U Z O N. So that... if you go to the website, you can. Another thing, if you go to the website, all the roses in the auction are listed, and there's a link to help me find on each rose. So if you click on the rose, you can find all the information you want about it. And this is why people during their live auction, they're already prepared. Yeah. Th- they know they want this right. rose. You know, we forgot to mention the most important thing about the entire auction in Rose Show, though, 
And that's that Mission Hills Nursery is sponsoring it this year. <laughs> Without Mission Hills Nursery, this just wouldn't happen. Yeah. It wouldn't. We were going to close the doors. You no, know, we would offer until we'd, next maybe year. we'd auction off four roses. <laughs> and that's it would it. be from you, you know your patio. Are you bringing a banner or you something? Know, that would be no fun. Are you, are, you, are you quietly supporting this, or is it going to be a big banner, Mission Hills Nursery? No, since it's been all over the place uh, yeah. on the website, on the flyers, and everything. So, yeah. Hey, we're going to take a break uh, because we have to do that every now and then to stay on track for our friends on Biz Talk Radio. <laughs> there is a format, there is a clock, as they say in the business. So, we're going to take a break for Biz Talk Radio for our sponsors and other people who advertise across the network. Those on Facebook Live, still plenty of time. Questions, comments, whatever is on your mind here. As we continue on your Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon, or maybe you're listening back to the show, could be the middle of the night. In any case, we are Garden America. Hey, guess what? We've returned from the break, and we are Garden America. I'm Brian Main, along with John Bagnesco, Tiger Palafox. We talked uh, a lot about the Rose Auction coming up October 30th and 31st. Plenty of ways to get involved, even, even if you're not here live at the event, as John uh, explained and outlined. So uh, if you want the newsletter, go to our website, GardenAmerica.com, California Coastal Rose Society. You know, the rose we were talking about before the break, the uh, Suzanne, um, I, you can click on gardens and it shows you how many plants there are in gardens across the country. Oh, cool. And there's mm. only one place I can see in California that has a, one Look of those roses. So you could be the second place yeah. if you get one. Off the top of your head, what is the rarest rose that we'll be auction. auctioning off or the hardest to find? Or any come to mind? If, if it roots the... The main rose that we were going to auction. Well, oh, you named one after me? <laughs> How main. nice. <laughs> Call wow. The main rose. The main rose. Yeah. Uh -oh. Well, that was nice. But um, uh, I forgot the name of it. Oh, Joanna if, Millar. If it roots, Joanna Millar. Yeah, because the one that was going to be in the auction, a rabbit ate. <laughs> oh, goodness. Seriously. Yeah. Oh. I, and just last night I went out there and I saw, you know, Something zipped between the rose bushes, and I could see, you know, it was in a hurry to get away. Oh, all you yeah. saw is just the top. Just the, yeah, yeah. And then I looked down the hill, and this rabbit was probably, it was going twice as fast as a rose runner to get away. <laughs> so you know, there's, no, there's no way to protect your roses from that? No, but, you know, if a, ro <laughs> yeah. a rabbit's going that fast, it's guilty. Oh, yeah. of course. You know, it knows what it, what it was what doing. What it did? Yeah. yeah. Looks around first, doesn't see anybody, grabs the rose, But takes yeah, it off. ate the whole rose. Completely dead. So they are edible, of course. So I'm trying to, I have a new one I'm trying to root. Uh, so that may be in the auction and may not be. Matter of fact, that rose is so rare that a reporter from CNN is doing a story on it. Oh. And they'll be at the auction? Not, she was originally planning on being in the auction, but she just got out of the hospital a couple weeks ago, so... Uh, probably next year. Yeah. Hmm. What about okay. uh, what about Peggy Martin? Not uh, very rare. It's very durable. But a great rose to have. See, that's the kind of rose, rose you want to give a novice. For those that yeah. have never grown roses, for those no, that I don't, don't know what? about a novice. Seriously? <laughs> yeah, because you have to have a space. You have to have space for it. To you have begin to have a with. flood. Oh, well, I'm, I'm talking about once you've yeah. You, then, you have to have a flood. <laughs> it's got to be at least underwater. My, my water point for is, a once month. you plant it, it, it does very well on its own. It's tenacious. Right. Yeah. Well, Tiger learned a way to keep it in check is just don't water yep. or fertilize it. You're right. It just <laughs> and it takes blooms care. all the time. It, it blooms all the time, takes care of itself, really? doesn't grow too crazy. Yeah. yeah. You only recently have gotten into roses, haven't you, in the last couple of years? Yeah. Yeah. All because, you know, John, he shows me these pictures of roses and I get excited and then I go get them. And now I have to have them in my yard. I think one of the first words out of your mouth was, what's all the fuss about? <laughs> what's all this with roses? Hey, John got me into roses like 15, 20 years ago. Hey, I got a, I got a question for John off the rose subject. But, you know, being from Michigan and me being from Southern California, I was thinking about Brian started the show and was talking about October, fall starting. Now, is for us, fall is the perfect time of year to start planting. Um I, I always recommend people here in Southern California to wait till November because we have Santa Ana winds that still are very dry and hot and difficult to mm -hmm. get things rooted sometimes. But 
come November, the weather's beautiful. It's cool. Hopefully in December, January, we get a little bit of rain. Um, it's a perfect time for planting. Now, is is fall for planting on the East Coast and Midwest the shortest season? Because, I mean, if they start planting fall stuff now, by November, December, you might have frost and snow where if they go Michigan, in the spring. You, you don't plant anything in the you, fall. You don't. You so don't. so they don't do anything after right. summer, like, at all. They stop planting in June. <laughs> it, are they planting pansies in June, though? Like, do they do pansies they at do all? They do pansies in the spring. In the spring. Yeah. Okay. So, because, so we go, like, pansies in spring. We go pansies in winter. And petunias in the summer. I would summer. say probably the the only thing that uh, they plant a lot of in the fall are mums. Okay. Yeah. And then that'll but that'll just carry them maybe to October Thanksgiving kind Until of. Until it snows. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, it, so, so it's they a last very longer short there because it's not not hot. Yeah. You know, so you don't have to worry about those little button mums we were talking about are fine there because I think they call them cushion mums too. Uh-huh. They, uh huh. They they don't burn. Okay. So. So they'll be fine, and you can sometimes you'll put in a few pansies, but you know they're not going to last long. Yeah. Sometimes people will plant perennials uh, just to give right. color for this time, but they yeah. know it's going to go away. Right, and the main thing I, I said uh, as far as plants goes, mums, but the main planting is for bulbs, fall bulbs. Okay, so you've got tulips and hyacinths. They're and putting daffodils. all those in now right. in anticipation for the cold for next spring. To put it this way, if John was still back in Michigan. He'd be doing something totally different than he's he'd doing. He'd still be in houseplants. He'd still be in houseplants. I would not grow uh, roses. I'll no, tell you no, that. no, no. What's the point? I yeah. mean, you get uh, what do they have? Japanese beetles, black spot. Deer. <laughs> <laughs> well, we never had deer where we were, uh-huh. but you get black spot. You get um, now. There's rose rosette disease. Goodness. So it's just like and and it's what? all for what. Three months of, of, of a show, right? Well, they don't start blooming till June. Right. So you're looking so at June, you, July, July August, August, and then they're kind of wrapping up, right? Yeah, that's about it. So you get all that work for three months of a, of a show. It's just so totally different. We just yeah. walk out any time of the year, check our plants out, a little trimming, maybe some water. Well, like I say, like... If I lived in Michigan, I would move to California. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, but, but like I say, like... We could do things any time of year, but then there's just the preferable times. Of course. You know, I mean, right. like I mentioned, if there's a Santa Ana on our radar at all, I'm telling people not to do anything. Because Santa Anas are worse than planting in 100-degree temperature. It, they just dry. They suck the – it's dry. Right out. And, and there's nothing you can do. No moisture you, at you all. Could, you could be watering the plant and seeing the plant still wilt right. <laughs> as the Santa Ana would The only thing blowing. you could do is set up one of those mist, <laughs> mist systems, yeah. you know? Set up a big wall that just protects them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you got to protect from the wind and have a, have a mist. Well, yeah. I don't know, John. This hot weather, I had. you asked me last week what was blooming. Mm-hmm. Just about all my roses in the past two or three weeks. Yeah, I had a, I had a good life. bloom. I had a good bloom going on mine, too. Just the heat, and as long yeah. as you water them. Yeah, Peggy Martin, Orange Juice, Chrysler Imperial. Those are the ones that I have. And uh, Patty just did a nice thing for her husband. Oh, right. Bought some gloves? Yep. She said, I ordered nice. two two pairs of gloves. Ooh. One for herself, one for her husband. Yeah. Very nice. Patty, did you get the green or did you get the gray? That's Maybe she question. got one of each. That's what, yeah. If you're listening, I'd, I'd like to know. See, now, if my wife would have got two pairs of gloves. <laughs> it would have been both for her? They would have both <laughs> been for me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're going to take a break. Right. We're going to come back after these messages like, on Biz Talk Radio. You can go do the work. And... Uh, <laughs> Those of you on Facebook Live, keep those questions, those comments coming. We are going to take a break. As sponsors on BizTalk Radio, happy weekend, Brian Maine, John Begnasker, Tiger Palafox. Again, back to you, BizTalk Radio, then back to us on Facebook Live. Stay with us.
Hey, we have returned from the break. Good to see you. Yes, uh, we do see you. You see us. It's kind of a back and forth thing. Don't ask us how we do it. <laughs> Tiger does all that. Anyway, we are back with Tiger, John, myself, Ryan Main. Good questions, good comments. And my good buddy, Kevin Lawrence, who's online. I'm learning a lot about him. I've known him since junior high school. Never knew all these little things that he's now talking about on Facebook Live, let alone that he was into gardening. Yeah, and he was the one that was mentioning about getting roses from the uh, Sharp Sharp Hospital Hospital Garden. They would trim the roses off, go to the beach, and hand them out to girls. That's a great... That's a great icebreaker. Yeah, that is a great icebreaker. Why, how nice. Thank you. And I know... I don't know if they have a rose garden still, but I know Sharp um, uh, Memorial... Hospital has a wonderful sensory garden that they did. Oh yes, um, I did hear about that. They they found that um, the in hospitals, whether it's people with different different diseases or injuries, they have these sensory gardens, which you know touch, smell, mm-hmm. um, you know, allow people to just recover a little bit better. And so I I know what that they did. Taste? A, I I don't know if they <laughs> encourage that much, but I'm sure there is an element of it. But, um, yeah, the sensory garden at Sharp Memorial is really good. So That'd be a great sign in a museum or someplace. Don't touch, but you can taste. And you what? just have people licking. What? <laughs> licking. Oh, man, that doesn't make sense. I can't touch it, but if, I can taste it. If it was it. Willy Wonka's factory, Why would I want to taste that? It'd make perfect sense. A joke was in poor taste. <laughs> Did I tell you he was on his game this week? On point. And, of course, he's going to ask you about taste because... The last time you could taste was what, back in 2010? <laughs> yeah. A lot's changed, John, since then. It's been six so years. Tasting's come a long way. Uh, Patty says that she got green for herself All right. and gray for her husband. There you go. Okay. All right. Her husband's name is Brian. See, I like that. See how we can move, move products and services, goods and services? Yeah. You have Charlie on the air, boom. Boom. We got gloves. Yeah, and I, I like we the, got your I gloves. Like her that she, she got the green. I mean- uh, Charlie's listening. It's like, okay, yeah, you got your gray for, you know, more neutral, but probably more male. I think camouflage would be great. I really do. That'd be a great idea. I, I think he agreed with you. I think the wheels were turning. I think the wheels were turning because yeah. the other thing, too, those. I mean, these gloves, like we're talking about the different purposes, I'd, I'd, I would totally imagine that you would want these gloves while doing something where you would be wearing camouflage. Mm-hmm. You know, like Archery. I don't. I don't it yeah. would be great gloves for our tree. They need right? to cut the finger out, though, right? I'll Don't bet they? if if you bought a pair of those gloves, in a day or two, you'd be thinking, wow, there's a lot of things you could do with these, not just yeah. gardening. Yeah. So I think that if I'm, – I'm never I, – I don't think I own any camouflage anything, but the, the people that do wear camouflage and do things that require, I right. think that these would be a great pair of gloves for them. Patty says that her husband has a wood chipper and chainsaws and a wood splitter. Sounds like Ooh. a fun guy, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so that, yeah, it's going to be perfect. Come in handy to have those gloves. Um, you remember I went to Flagstaff for uh, my friend's property? Two weeks ago. So one of, the things that, one of the things that he was saying, when you buy property and you live out here, you spend half your time just gathering and then preparing wood. Yeah, like that's all you do is you cut down trees, split it, chop it, stack it. You know what? When I and then you just cut down. When I went cheese. to school in Flagstaff, and <laughs> obviously I, I lived there. We lived in a house. Yeah. with two roommates, we'd have cords of wood down by the garage. Yeah, and during the winter time, it's like, okay, who's going down to get it? Yeah, I got it last time. You go. It's too cold. Yeah. All right, I'll go get it and bring up all this wood. Jeez. Yeah. Well, Tiger was asking what you do in Michigan in the fall, and it's it's hunker down. Yeah. You know, you're preparing everything for the winter, and chopping wood and piling up wood is one thing. Uh, mulching the garden heavily, uh, getting ready to cover things that are frost tender. Jeez. Uh, spraying broadleaf evergreens with an anti-transparent. Oh, yeah. Because very few broadleaf evergreens grow in Michigan. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of like the borderline. So you spray them to protect them through the whole winter? Do you have right. to re-spray or no? It's just like a Usually one Usually one is one, one yeah. spray is good. But people Jeez. always try to get rhododendrons to grow and they end up, you know, dying. But <laughs> occasionally they'll make it through if the winter's not too bad. Detroit, Michigan in the 1960s by John Bagnasco. <laughs> I think I... It's a lot different back then. I remember driving through Detroit... On the way to Montreal from here, yeah. going through Pontiac and then through Detroit and then over into Windsor, taking the tunnel into uh, – That tunnel always scared me because fir- it would be leaking. Yeah, it was kind of 
And we, and you ha- I remember <laughs> no, it's, it's it goes under the Detroit River. And, and, yeah. and you just start driving yeah. through it, and there's water coming right, down the walls. Right. Now, John, that is so scary. Correct me if I'm wrong, but <laughs> as I recall, in order to get to that tunnel, you had to go through kind of a questionable area to get through there. Detroit in the 60s. Was all questionable. Was all questionable. <laughs> right. And I didn't live in Detroit in the 60s. We moved oh. out in uh, oh. 61, I think. Wow. Like, yeah. I've been like, wrong all these years. I think yeah. Brian's description. You had to go through a questionable area, and John was like, it, it was all questionable. It was all questionable right. back in the 60s. That would have never gotten off the highway there. Okay, we got Kevin again oh. with a comment. Are you reading that, John? Uh, yeah, but if you've got it there, why don't you read it? Kevin says, our ungrafted lemon tree in Poway would always be prolific with new lemons in December, January, only to get first or frost burn when the temp would drop below freezing. Good lemons until they froze it was like about 15 years in a row. I should have used a, tr- should I have used a tree blanket. Where, where do you live? Poway. Valley Center? This is pa- back when he Poway. lived in Poway. It was good until it must the Must have been uh, a low frost. area in Poway. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, it takes a lot to freeze a lemon in Southern California. Right, because they're pretty hardy anyway. Yeah. Limes, not so much, but lemons no, but are lemons. hardy. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, if you used a frost blanket, that would have helped out a lot. Right. Because I, I can't imagine you got that much frost that it was a whole right. month of, of cold temperatures. Hey, we're heading into October now. I've got some cuties on that citrus tree that are they're still green, but they're looking good. Yeah, Isn't you're probably you're probably two Does months. Does Dana know about these cuties? <laughs> we've uh, we've discussed it. Yeah, you've come to an understanding. <laughs> we don't. We know we speak no more of it. <laughs> you've got a couple months before couple they'll months. ripen up yeah. for sure. Still. You know, good. that was the one thing that was cool to learn from Oh, yeah, Lance. they're not going to be ripe till after Christmas. No, yeah. right. But right. I'm, just, I'm watching him. It's like, wow, these pretty prolific. I've got a lot of them on there. But that was kind of cool to learn from Lance when he was talking about, you know, that the color of the fruit does not determine the ripeness of the fruit. Yeah, that was interesting, In so many right? different ways. And when I mean, he was talking about how when they choose to harvest certain fruits for whether it was the distilling or for eating or things like that, and they'd have to determine it from the you know the sugar content and other things that went along with it, yeah. So yeah, you're. I mean, so you're you're at least a couple months away from ripening for those. You're mandarins. just a thump and a squeeze away from being ripe. <laughs> a thump and a squeeze. <laughs> Never heard that before. That's I just good. made it up. Yeah. Hey, Kevin says uh, go Red Wings. Uh, here's a little tip for Kevin if he hasn't heard it yet. You can. Pr- it's probably on YouTube, but you can Google. Gordy Howe is the greatest of them all. And the there, song? That was a song. Have you heard that song? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty much all the lyrics. <laughs> you know, everybody's talking about Tom Brady playing football at 45. Uh-huh. Gordy Howe played hockey into his early 50s. With who? Uh, with the Houston Arrows of the World Hockey Association. No, do you remember who? And the who? No, who joined him? His sons. Both his sons. Yeah, Mark and Marty. Yeah. So he played with his sons. They were here for a tournament years ago that we were involved with, but... Uh, Fifty two, fifty three, and and you know what he was wasn't just some old guy out there. He was holding his own in his heyday. He was mean. He was good, but you didn't mess with him. And even in his fifties, he dropped the gloves. Yeah, they um, used to play at the Olympia, the Olympia Auditorium, right? In De- in Detroit, yeah. And my both my brothers were big hockey guys, and my brother Dave was a hockey coach, and and uh, their sons all played hockey, and and they had season tickets always to the Red Wings. It paid for my college. <laughs> I've only been to one hockey game in my life. <laughs> You've been to a lot of things. You're kidding. Life. Was it a Detroit Red Wings game? No, it was the Ducks. Okay. It was uh, all right. Yeah, but it's, it's like ping pong on ice. <laughs> <laughs> things I haven't done, things I will never do, and things yeah. I've only done once. Hey, our thought process is all over the place, but I did mention Lance, and that made me remember. He sent me a link. I've got to send it to you, John, um, and I've got to post it. He, you remember he he has his gin? Right. Oh, absolutely. It's available for yes. mail order now. So oh. I want to send that link out to our, our listeners and our viewers. Um, Lance Walheim, longtime friend of the show. How can you buy alcohol mail order? Because how do they know how old well, you are? So here is the one thing, and I know this just because I've had it done before, is when you buy alcohol mail order, when they ship it to you, the person – that delivers it has to check oh. who they're giving it to and it has to match. So you it's one of those things they don't just leave it on your doorstep. You have to um be home to receive it. So then that person checks. 
Okay, we're going to take a break. And guess what, gang? Just one more segment. After this, we got, we've got to take a break Goodness for our, our many sponsors on BizTalk Radio. And then we're going to come back with our final segment on your Saturday weekend here with Garden America. Stay with us. Okay, gang, we are back for our final segment here. Uh, if, if, it's, if you're watching us live on this uh, Saturday morning, if you're uh, BizTalk Radio, this is last week's show, so thank you for tuning in and supporting BizTalk Radio. And the many sponsors who sponsor this show here on Garden America. We've talked about a lot of things this morning. I think during the last break we, we talked hockey. And uh, we gardening. talked uh, gardening. And, uh, boy, we've covered a wide gambit this morning, John. What about azaleas and camellias? Haven't touched upon that yet. Let's do that. Don't fertilize them. They're done. They're done for the season. Yeah, they're getting ready to... You didn't mean ever, just now. Right. Uh, they're done growing, really. So they're uh, they're setting buds for the, the coming year, and they don't need any more fertilizer. So stop it. Stop it. Hey, I was um, just on the BizTalk Radio website, and I figured since this is the end of one of our spots that... We'd be either getting some listeners that are going to the next show, um, and I, you know, I I'm looking at a lot. There's a lot of financial and Bitcoin and other shows. So if you're into gardening, you got to tune in a little bit earlier. And oh, absolutely, yes. You'll catch yes. our show, right? And if you have Alexa, just say Alexa, play Garden America Radio Show, and bingo, there it is. What and about it, that idea you had where people had to pay Bitcoin in order to view our videos? <laughs> that didn't go anywhere. Yes. Why nobody not? Paid, nobody chose. Uh, but maybe yeah. we should talk to this guy, Bitcoin for Boomers wow. and Crypto Cousins, four minute Bitcoin. You wouldn't think anybody would be promoting anything to Boomers anymore, <laughs> except maybe cemetery plots. Oh, good. <laughs> but, but besides you that, you know, you, Are know, you a Boomer? Yeah. You yeah, know why boomer? Boomers have money? This is this is the thing. They have more expendable income. I know a lot of them are re retired, but they have the money to spend and invest for the most part. Yeah. The problem is, by the time you get the money, you're too old to do anything. <laughs> you're too tired. You're too tired to spend it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was just telling Shannon yesterday. You know, I wake up in the morning and I'm tired. <laughs> That's the first thing I think of. <laughs> I think you everybody's wake up, tired when they first and, wake up. In in. John, I can't, but it gets I can't worse imagine. As the day goes on. I, I imagine only Saturday mornings you wake up to an alarm. The you rest know, of the week, the rest of the week, do you wake up to an alarm? No, no, right? No, and usually, in all, even though I set the alarm on Saturday, I would say half the time you're awake I, before. I awake. Yeah, I get up before. Now, Brian, say, I, you're, I, you're up at way. like four o'clock every day, I'm right? Four four thirty, and that's my internal clock. Yeah. Yeah. I never use an alarm. Yeah, I'm five thirty. And, and 530. on the weekends, or like on tomorrow when I can sleep in. It's a struggle to sleep past six. Oh yeah, so, it is. Okay, yeah, for me I too. I get up. I get, I get you. Yeah. That's why this morning was so nice. I mentioned to John is because it was cool and cloudy, that it was darker. And so when I woke up, yes, I I felt it was earlier, and I looked at the clock. I'm like, oh wow, like I actually kind of slept mm -hmm. in a little bit this morning. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you know, I was looking at my um, magic dogwood. Oh, nice. And about to go to sleep. And uh, I was, because it, it just came through a couple of weeks of 100-degree temperatures, and that's not good for dogwoods. But it's, all the buds are setting. I mean, dozens and dozens of buds. Ooh, still. So, yeah. Awesome. So dogwoods always set their buds in the fall and then open up in the spring. Yeah. But it so, made it through the, the hot temperatures? It made it through the survived? hot temperatures. It's kind of protected, but, you know, it's in a, in a pot. And plants in pots, when it's really hot, it's just too bad. <laughs> just I mean, I've bad. probably lost. <laughs> I know. I, I would That's say in the last two months, Ryan I probably lives. had 50 roses die. By the way, I cut back the hibiscus, as you suggested last week. Oh, yeah. Maple sugar or the other one? Maple sugar. Maple sugar. And I cut maybe not quite half. But about That's half perfect. halfway down, it th it looks better. Yeah, it's not so leggy. Yeah, yeah, it will. It'll look better, for and sure. it'll look a lot better. But it's it's a watering weekend, obviously. Today, I didn't water the last couple two or three days. I walked by everybody. How you doing? All right. <laughs> Sometimes plants amaze me in my garden how they survive. 
Because <laughs> I, I won't go out there sometimes in water either. I'm like, oh, you're still alive? Good job. Doing good? Well do you done. ever go out in your yard and do something and find a plant you didn't realize you had anymore? <laughs> um, yes. There's an area that I have plants that I've planted, and then sometimes they just die, but then they come back. Yes, yeah. that has happened. By the yes. way, how are your, was it poppies? No, nah, they never came back. Never came back? No. Nah. My poppies never came back. Well, those are my... the ones your son was throwing seeds or something right. all over the yard, right? Oh, those California poppies, yes. Yeah, my papa bear poppies never came back, and my dahlias never came back. I planted those dahlias, remember? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they never came back. Yeah. And then my um, happens. alliums, my alliums never mm. got past the foliage point. Yeah, yeah. that's. I thought yeah. that would happen. Yeah, we knew. We kind of knew it was going to happen, but, you know, you tried. That's another you thing they, they do in the fall in Michigan uh, is dig up their dahlias oh yeah and put them in a box put them in the basement dahlias and uh, what else did they dig up uh cannas, cannas. yeah yep yeah. i dig dahlias <laughs> <laughs> just a statement does dana know this also <laughs> she knows i dig dahlias <laughs> any dahlia john, listeners john, out there? john dug the black dahlia you know that's exactly what i was thinking in my <laughs> mind <laughs> oh we do that a couple of two or three times a show. That was 50s, right? Yep. Uh, for, wait. I want to say late 40s, Los really? Angeles. Yeah. Can't um, remember. We got a couple hey, minutes. Next next weekend, um, a longtime friend of the show, um, and uh, we haven't had him. I don't think we've ever had him on, though. Uh, Sam Tall from City Farmers Nursery is going to be joining us. City Farmers local nursery here in San Diego, but they do a lot of wonderful uh farming things and they do this contest every year where they give seeds out to people that come into the nursery and want them and then they have like a uh, squash growing contest and you know different year different times of year they do different um vegetables and so we're going to be talking to oh, sam that Tall. would be fun who has the biggest zucchini yeah right yeah yeah and so they they you know um so we're going to be talking with sam tall from city farmers nursery Okay, well, that's going to do it. Uh, that is next week's show. As Tiger mentioned, if you get the newsletter, all that information is in there. If you don't get the newsletter, go to our website, GardenAmerica.com. Yes, www, but you don't need to do that. GardenAmerica.com. Also, our uh, YouTube channel to watch uh, previous shows, archive shows, Garden America Radio Show. Thank you for tuning in. Those on BizTalk Radio, those on Facebook Live. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Have a safe week. And we'll do it again next week, the three of us, along with you, right here on Garden America. Take care. <laughs>